the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be patient, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. 
James urges. But who wants to be patient for this coming anymore? How long must this world struggle with injustice and oppression? How long will God allow this before doing something? Be patient is what all those in power, all with privilege, all those who oppress say, be patient because things can't change all at once. But in those voices, be patient is just a way to stop reform, to shut out voices that cry for justice, to hinder progress. Tonight we celebrate that the triune God of all space and time, the creator and lover of all things has become human, has joined our life here and is bringing peace and healing and restoration. God's mercy is among us and God's peace has come. But it's very hard for us to see signs of peace on earth, goodwill to all in this world. What are we supposed to do? Be patient? Paul says to his church in Rome, for in hope we are saved. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. All earth is hopeful, we sing, but all earth finds it hard to see that God is doing anything. Yet Paul's wisdom is that patience is born out of such hope in the unseen. Paul says that patience, a gift, a fruit of the Holy Spirit, is a good thing. So can be patient, be words of hope for us as well. We may not have any option to patience given what we know of how God works. Any talk of God doing something falls apart when we actually ask just how that will happen. Do we want God as superhero flying in with power to stop all evil and wickedness and oppression and whatever else needs stopping? We've never seen God do that before. Do we want God as ruler somehow affecting political systems, maybe even changing elections? It's doubtful any of us expect that God manipulates in that way. And what of miracles? We pray for them, mostly for healing. Sometimes God does them. Many times God doesn't. And what miraculous fix could God make to make this society and this world more at peace? Destroy all weapons from above? The problem with our impatience is that if we want God to restore all things immediately, the only options are somehow forcibly changing this world in one way or another. And that's just not how we've seen God work. It's not how the scriptures say God works. Virtually no religion on earth thinks God works this way. But let's come back to tonight. Shepherds on a Judean hillside are told good news of great joy. God has come to save. God has come to bring peace to all. But this is the sign they are given. Go and look for a baby. Not a superhero or a politician or a miracle worker. Peace to all starts with a baby. This baby wasn't even part of the earliest hope of the church. The earliest Christian writings and the earliest records of Christian worship all focus on Easter. Christ's degradation and humiliation and death on a cross and rising in glory. The proclamation that God has broken the power of death and has made a new reality in Christ for the whole universe. That's what was central. But at some point, believers also began to wonder where Jesus of Nazareth came from. He obviously didn't appear suddenly at 30 years old on the banks of the Jordan. And this wonder emerged. This crucified and risen Jesus 
this word of God, this eternal Christ, began his ministry on earth not as teacher, healer, or even savior. He began as a baby. Now that's obvious, right? He had to have been born. But by the time of Luke's writing, this is called good news. The sign of God's peace on earth. The sign of the beginning of God's healing and salvation for all things. The only thing the shepherds were told to look for is a baby in a manger. And that sign can only be known and grasped with patience. Once a baby begins growing inside her mother, there are nearly nine months of speculation and wonder and waiting before the arrival. You can't rush this. Then, when the baby comes, there are weeks and weeks where it seems like very little is happening. Maybe incremental changes can be seen. Then teeth start growing. Sounds are made and then words. Crawling, then walking. The independent mind emerges, then the teen years, then the prefrontal cortex development, and finally, you've got a fully grown adult human being. Waiting and watching for what a person will become from conception onward can only be done with the deepest of patience. That's because a baby is all about potential. Certainly, every day there is something new and a new change. But for a long time, years really, a baby is all about possible hope, potential energy. And this is your sign of salvation from God, the angel says. Look at a baby, begun but not yet fully realized life. And this sign says that God's salvation of the universe is an inside job not a rescue mission. The preparation and groundwork for the coming of God was patiently laid for centuries before Bethlehem. And when God's son finally arrived after nine months of gestation, 30 years of growth happens before ever a word of proclamation is uttered. The triune God was willing to wait a long time. That's patience. And even after the resurrection, and Pentecost. It became obvious this was a slow play by God. After Pentecost, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, Rome still ruled. People were evil, disease plagued, poverty was rampant. Maybe some of the mentions of the second coming in the New Testament come from people who had simply lost patience with the speed of God's healing, salvation coming. Come a second time, God, but this time come as a fully grown Savior who will rule with power and actually do something. But God's sign says, look at the baby and ponder that. In God's patient willingness to arrive as a human infant, we see the whole of God's plan. All things will be healed from within the creation, one person at a time. The least important thing that Jesus ever did in his whole ministry was the miracles. Superpowers and miraculous forces aren't part of God's plan. Teaching and modeling love, calling people one at a time, showing the depth and strength of that love at the cross, rising to bring new life, sending the Holy Spirit to spread that love everywhere, that's God's plan. God's desire to draw the whole universe back into the triune life of God can only happen in this glacial, maddeningly slow way. When your heart is transformed and you begin to beam God's radiant light a little more each hour, a little more each day. And then as God's light shines from you and lights another little by little, day by day, and it doesn't look like much at first, maybe not for a long time, but the light of love 
will eventually dawn over the whole creation. You can learn a lot about patience waiting on a baby. But remember this, that patience, that long-suffering waiting, that watching for signs of maturing and growth and doing, in all of that, there is hope. Because peace on earth, goodwill to all, is on the move. God's healing has begun. We have seen signs of it growing and spreading for 2,000 years, and now it's within you, flickering out on the outsides of your heart, working its way into your core. As long as it will take God to change you, that's a glimpse of how long it will take God to change this world. But look at the baby. That's your sign. Ponder. Let the Spirit grow patience in you and be of good cheer. Because there is hope. And this sign is good news of great joy for all the peoples not least of which for you yourself. In the name of Jesus, amen.